Today we covered the sorcerer's skills, feats, and not one but two mistakes I've been making over the last two videos. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. And we are, of course, going back through the first edition Pathfinder Sorcerer Guide, and we're covering their skills and feats today. And as I said at the start of the video, I've got two mistakes to fess up to. But before we get into what exactly it was that I did wrong, if you're new here to the channel, then go on down there to hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or, if you're already listed on such a legendary roster of incredible heroes such as that, then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide. But now, let's go ahead and talk about, well, the skills, feats, and what I did wrong. And to begin with, for skills, you have the appraise skill, which works off of your intelligence, and this essentially lets you appraise the value of different items. Given our lack of skill points, or lack of large numbers of skill points, this is a pretty solid one to skip. The next skill is Bluff, which works off of your charisma. Now, if you're the party face, then this is probably going to be worth it to throw the occasional investment in. And with your charisma, you can reasonably bluff past many opponents. The only drawback is, again, the lack of skill points, meaning this may not be an every level investment for you. Then we come down to Craft, which works from your intelligence, and this can be an interesting selection, but again, we're working with a fundamental lack of skill points, so this is probably one that's safe that's to brush to the side and not really worry about. Now, one skill that you really should think about, or at least I would recommend thinking about, is Fly. It works from your dexterity, so you're starting off with a bit of a bonus here. When you start using fly on yourself, you're going to want to be able to make the skill checks necessary for maneuvering around. So this is where it's going to be important. Granted, you may end up with some other options at hand. Magic carpets and the like come to mind, for example. And then we have Intimidate, which again kind of falls into the same category as Bluff, works from your charisma. In addition to being a terrifying spellcaster, you can threaten people with the fact that you're a terrifying spellcaster and actually come across as threatening without having to expend any of those valuable magics. Then we move on to probably the most valuable knowledge skill, and that's Knowledge Arcana. While it is working off of your intelligence with a fairly minimal bonus from there, this is still easily the most useful knowledge skill, so throwing in an occasional point now and then is going to be useful. And remember, for any class skill that you actually put points into, you get that one time plus three miscellaneous modifier that applies, so you can reasonably get away with throwing in the occasional point every level, every other level, or however many spaced out. So definitely something for you to think about in that regard. But the next one that you can really skip over is profession, working off of your wisdom. So no bonus there if you're following this guide. This is for making money outside of adventuring, having those uh, different odd little miscellaneous skills that kind of fill the gaps between the different larger uh, crafting skill groups. This is one that you can also skip. But one that is absolutely going to be essential is Spellcraft. This is good for identifying spells and researching items and will be necessary for a, uh, a feat we want to pick up later on. And then lastly, we come to my first mistake with this guide, and that's Use Magic Device. That's right, it's a class skill and it works off of your charisma. So the trait that makes this a class skill is not really going to be any good for you other than giving you a plus one modifier to your use magic device skill so you can instead skip that now and just take reactionary and gain yourself a plus two bonus to your initiative but use magic device will be useful for expanding your spell variety the number of, sp of different kinds of spells that you can cast because remember sorcerers are locked into a very small um, list of spells known while having a huge number of spell of times that they can cast spells per day so this will be useful for uh, rounding out your 
different day-to-day magical needs, giving you some tactical variety, and having just a general edge over non-casting or even other casting opponents. So definitely invest in it. And then we come to feats, and starting off with feats, we dive into the second mistake I've been making, where I mislabeled spell focus from bloodline feats as something just kind of okay to pick up. It's actually going to be really, really good for you. And what this does is it adds plus one to the save DCs for your selected school of spells. If you're going to be a gnome, well, uh, going in with illusions will probably work out pretty well for you given that gnomes have bonuses to the illusion magics that they cast already. So this amplifies that and makes it much more difficult to resist the different effects that you're throwing out there. Then at third level we're picking up toughness which as a caster will be essential for you. You get plus three to your hit points total and plus one hit point per level making this again incredibly worth it for casters. Then for 5th level, you're picking up Reach Spell, which will let you extend the range category of your spells for higher level spell slots. So if you take a touch spell up to a close range spell, which is 25 feet plus 5 feet every 2 caster levels, this will take up 1 spell slot. The higher up you go, the more spell slots this will take up, but this helps to make some of your shorter range spells and earlier level spells that much more viable and useful, it just may not always be necessary for you to make use of. And then for 7th level, we're going to pick up Persistent Spell, which is going to be absolute gold for you. Uh, spell targets must roll their saves twice and take the lower result. This adds plus two to, this, to the spell level, so third level spells count as fifth level. So while Fireball is not the most useful spell once you actually dig into the mechanics of the game, you can still force your targets who might otherwise be uh, having or taking no damage on successful reflex saves to still take end up taking a failed save by making them roll twice and take the worst result so this is an absolutely gold spell for you this or well feet in that case uh, different illusion magics and the like def uh, anything that offers up a save is going to be great to uh, paired up with this one for our 7th level bloodline feat, however, we are going to be taking improved initiative. While there is benefit to taking it earlier, the fact it's on our bloodline list means that we can kind of, or that we actually want to get away with taking it here, which will give you a plus 4 bonus to your initiative, which is crucial. Uh, plus 4 bonus to initiative from this, plus 2 from the trait, and then another plus 2 from your dex means you're getting a plus 8 total. You're going to be winning a lot of the initiative turn orders and starting first, which is great for casters. Then 9th level, we're going to pick up Spell Penetration, which gives a plus 2 bonus to caster level checks to overcome spell resistance. At 9th level, you may not be running into it a lot, but you're going to start seeing it more and more from here on out. So getting it now means you will be able to overcome opponents that are on coming to you and will be incredibly useful and pairs up with another later selection quite nicely. For 11th level, we're going to pick up Augment Summoning and start leaning into what we really want to uh, use for our spell focus, and that's Conjuration Magic, this, since this requires spell focus on Conjuration to pick up. Creatures you summon will get a plus 4 bonus to Strength and Constitution, so all the combat creatures that you can bring out are going to be that much more lethal and effective, so definitely pick this one up. We want to focus on Conjuration with this particular build. Then for 13th level, you're going to grab Dazing Spell. Creatures that take damage from spells modified by this are days for rounds equal to the original spell level or will negates. And this does add a hefty plus three level, a spell level modifier, but the fact that you can end up potentially making multiple targets dazed for, well, say you use Fireball. Say you catch five opponents in it and they fail the will saves associated with this. Say they only took five points of damage, but now they failed those will saves. They are now stunned for three rounds and stunning, uh, stunning an opponent is a great debuff to lay on them. So this uh, particular meta magic feat is great. Absolutely, I recommend you pick it up. 
Then your 13th level bloodline feat were grabbing improved counterspell. This lets you counter spells with spells from the same school of magic of one or more spell slots higher. So you don't necessarily need to have the appropriate counter spell to, well, counter other spells. This, the only thing that locks us in for maybe being just kind of good instead of great for you is the fact that we are limited on the number of spells known. So this can make it a bit tricky to apply, but I still think it's worthwhile and it's a bloodline bonus feat. So there's not a lot of harm in us taking this one. For 15th level, we are picking up Spell Perfection. This is the first level we are able to pick it up at, and you want this. Requires Spellcraft ranks of 15 and 3 Meta Magic feats. You pick one spell. You may use one Meta Magic feat you have without increasing the spell level or cast time as long as the modified spell level wouldn't normally exceed 9th. Any feats giving a numerical bonus to any part of the spell is doubled. Well, we're focusing on conjuration magic and we have augment summoning. This means if you were to take summon monster 6, any creature that you use to bring about with summon monster 6 now has their augment summon bonus doubled from 4 to 8. And also, because uh, spell focus adds to the spell save DCs, that increases those D that bonus from one to two in that instance. It, uh, given that it's uh, spell save DCs summoned creatures that may not count in that instance, but the augment summon bonus is definitely a shoe in. So definitely we are having a massively great combo with this particular series of feats and spell selections. For your 17th level feat, you're going to pick up Piercing Spell, which reduces your target's spell resistance by 5 in exchange for one spell level increase. So, a 5th level spell becomes a 6th uh, level spell in that regard. But, the fact that you can reduce the target's spell resistance and we get a plus 2 bonus to our caster level checks means that we are going to be reliably overcoming target spell resistance. It's not going to be often that they're going to be able to resist those effects outright. So definitely a good get for you to have. But then we come around to our 19th level selections and this is where it just kind of opens up a bit to player choice. Whatever ends up suiting your character, the encounters, the needs of the campaign, just pick it up and grab it. For your bloodline feat though, grab still spell. Still spell allows you to cast spells with all, without all of the gesticulating and gestures and different hand weavings and signs in exchange for just increasing the spell by one spell level. And that's the feats and skills that we have for the sorcerer here. Uh, certainly there are other combinations, like I said, being a gnome you get bonuses to illusion spells, so going in with spell focus on the illusion school of magic means that you can really make your illusion magic stick. And uh, coupling that with uh, uh, the uh, favored spell feat that we were going over earlier, that just increases those bonuses and modifiers ever further from these different meta magic feats. So. I mean, really, you're going to just knock it out of the park with this particular combination, even if you're not going with Conjuration overall. Just means you need to swap out Augment Summoning for another feat. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Did you like today's video? Did you dislike it? Let me know either way. Hit those like or dislike buttons and let me know what you think and what combinations you would run with down below. And remember, if you're new here to the channel, then go on down there and hit that subscribe button. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.